welcome back everybody a very good day to all now in the previous sessions or in the previous classes or in the previous videos we have seen so how to install the salesforce cli how to install visual studio code how to install salesforce extension pack and make a connectivity between all of those things and also get a hold of our salesforce org and connect our salesforce org with your visual studio code right right so now what we are going to do sir can i so many people are asking me questions sir what is the difference between the development done in the developer console as well as what is the difference between the thing that we do in the visual studio code okay see usually coding components or apex components that you create in your salesforce are usually what so they are they look like this file new and there you go so this is an apex class apex trigger visual force page visual force component and so many you can do all of these things using your visual studio code as well so let us first of all try to do something so i am going to create an apex class in my in my salesforce organization i'm going to say apex class my class one or apex class one what does it do it creates an apex class it creates an apex class right of course if you want some code inside it you can write some variables like integer x so public void display of system dot debug of x okay the value of x is x you can make it public or you can leave it as it is because we are anyway accessing that variable using our function which is public which can be executed from outside so no problem at all so save it so you can see in your uh, salesforce in the force.com platform in the force.com platform you can see in the development there is a custom code you can see apex classes and there you go so uh, an apex class that has been created by you has been generated can you see that so the thing that i created in the developer console have come up here now how can i create the same kind of thing from my visual studio code before doing that before doing that i want to see the same visual studio i mean same apex class created in my salesforce org in my visual studio code right see where are my apex classes very simple in your folder structure we have something called as force hyphen app which represents your force.com platform in which you have all the applications or uh, classes etc 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 right so now what i'm going to do here so expand the classes but unfortunately you are not having any classes here you are not having any classes here but if you want to have a look at or uh, look at or use the apex class that has been created in your visual uh, not visual exactly in your salesforce organizations developer console or in the force.com platform what can you do so there is something called an org browser of course there is more traditional way to do so that is called as manifest in the manifest you have a package.xml which is going to have apex classes you can simply go here and right click and retrieve the source in the manifest retrieve the source that is available in the manifest in the from the org from the org from the org that is this org we are retrieving the source that is available in the manifest file whatever the components you have specified here those things which are available in your salesforce org will be retrieved can i show it so right click you need not select anything right click here retrieve source in manifest from org see it is running and you can see that an apex class 1 has been opened an apex class 1 has been opened which was just what we have created in our salesforce force.com platform see how beautiful it is but uh, if you are using this package.xml file given by the salesforce people here or the visual studio code here you are getting all the things you are getting all the things let us say i am having another apex class and i am having another apex class so there are 
two more apex classes created in my salesforce and uh, let me refresh the page or open the apex classes once again you can see apex class 2 and apex class 3 are also available now if i right click and do the same operation once again what it will do it will get all your apex classes into your system but uh, currently i want to look at only apex class 2 and get that one only from now what can i do guys what can i do very simple that is you go to this org browser okay go to this org browser just refresh this so this is the org called as swiss tech demo dev sd and this is the alias name that i have created whenever you feel that some changes have happened in your salesforce organization just come to this org browser and refresh and see where you are you want your apex classes and open this and it is retrieving the information and can you see that guys can you see that this is the apex class 1 and this is the apex class 2 and this is the apex class 3 it will not open anything but we have an option retrieve and open the source and only retrieve see i will retrieve only apex class 2 click on this option retrieve source from org and see something is running at the bottom and you can see retrieve the source apex class 2 retrieve the source apex class 2 now you go to your explorer once again and you will be able to see your apex class 2 now right similarly i want to open the apex class 3 also but this time let us see this option that has been given to us which is saying retrieve and open source click on it it is not only retrieving but it is also opening that resource in your visual studio code so it is opening the meta file no need to worry see it has see don't worry about this meta file this meta file is the information about your apex class you might not have some pointers that need for it to be correct so please do not worry about it just remove it when you close any of these meta files the errors will automatically go please don't fret over the little things over there guys right guys so this is how we got the things so no need to worry uh, so we can just close it no 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 i am not going to replace it i'll just ignore it so only one suggestion is given it's fine it's fine no problem at all so i can simply remove it i open apex class 2 also you'll get the same kind of error i'll get apex class 1 also i'll get the same kind of error once you close your visual studio can open it so it will automatically go off you need not worry about it because we opened it from the org directly so it is assuming that should be compiled so that is why it, you are getting such kind of error so please do not worry about it right everyone fine sir you are saying how to get the classes that has been created in your developer console into your visual studio code but what if i want to do the vice versa that is i want to create an apex class in my in my visual studio code and how can i push it to my salesforce app? okay very simple so you just right click on your apex classes and just create an apex class this is one option we have so i will say apex class 4 see apex class 4 has been created successfully and uh, right click see currently that is not available in my system that is not available in my system but if you want that come to become in your system what is that you need to do you need to push that component or the class that you created in your visual studio code into your salesforce organization it's very simple you right click and simply click on deploy this source to the org deploy this source to the org again you can do the same thing using the package.xml file but by doing so you are going to deploy all the things that are available in your visual studio code so whereas if you want to do only one just to click on this apex class you can right click and do the same thing deploy right click and deploy and see it gets deployed so the deployment was successful and now you refresh this to only able to see that your apex class has come into your salesforce app. right guys so this is how we are going to work with the work with what your visual studio code in order to create the components into your visual I mean, salesforce organization please remember this everybody so 
either you create in visual studio code or you create in uh, your uh, developer console it doesn't matter it doesn't matter as uh, as long as it doesn't have any errors see once we deployed the error is also gone right right so as well, as long as you don't have any errors in it and you deploy it properly everything is fine you can execute everything from anywhere no problem at all no problem right but make sure if you are trying to create an Apex class and want to execute some things from the Apex class, make sure it is available in your Salesforce organization. If not, it will give you errors. For example, for example, make sure, see this, see this case. What I will do is I will remove this constructor that is not much needed. So I'm going to say that public static void uh, test or test method it is not that test method, so please don't worry about that. Okay, test method is a keyword, so we it will test my test method. My test method I'm saying, and I will say system.debug come up here, and I'm going to say my test method is all. Save it. Now what happened? What did you do? Carefully observe everybody. You made a change to the Apex class in your Visual Studio code. Okay. And you are trying to execute it. How can you execute it? You have your Apex file. Remember scripts? Apex file. Okay. Look at this everybody. I'm going to call. See Apex class 4 dot my test method. So that is the advantage of having your Visual Studio code. You need not go back remember each and every method name and all. Just to select this and execute anonymous apex with currently selected text. I selected it, remember. And see, it is giving you an error. Method does not exist or incorrect signature. Why? See, when I open this apex class 4, the change that you have made to your apex class 4 was not reflected here because you did not make it deployed into your Salesforce software. Of course, it should be right. So right click on your Apex class, deploy this source to the org. And now you can see the changes are applied to the Apex class in your force.com platform. Just a second. Yes. So now it is applied. Now execute the same line of code, guys. Now execute the same line of code. And you should see it executed successfully. And in the log, you should be able to see that debug statement I have executed. Can you see that? My test method is called. So this is how you are going to work with your Salesforce and the Visual Studio code together. Now the question comes, what the hell is the advantage here? What the hell is the advantage? The advantage is maybe you are not connected to the internet or your browser is not acting up much of and you can do a, some kind of local development. So many developers who are coming, not coming from cloud background. So they would like to have things on their system and there this is going to help a lot here. And also you can use this to deploy the components from one organization. You can simply switch to a different org here and deploy that component there also. And you can work. And please have a, a better look on this, have a play at this and then get more hands on on this usage of Visual Studio Code, which is going to help you a lot and in the next video i'm going to discuss about having code snippets having code snippets thank you very much everybody have a good day all